This build is for you if anything I'm about to say resonates. You're playing solo or in a team and always dying or going down first. You want to be almost constantly casting fire. Or maybe you're stuck at a challenge tier because you don't do enough damage, or you die before you can do a ton of damage. For me, I got stuck with this problem around challenge tier 10 and challenge tier 11, where I wasn't able to survive long enough to finish an expedition, or do enough damage to finish the expedition fast enough to unlock the next tier. This build is right in the middle where you feel like the human torch casting fire all over the place. You don't need legendary gear for this build, but I'll go over what legendaries you should get to replace your epic gear with. We're gonna start with the skills for this build and the skill tree, then the armor, the armor mods, and the weapons that make this build one of my favorites to run. For this build, the skills we're gonna use are Heat Wave, Thermal Bomb, and Phaser Beam, mostly because this build is focused around the Firestorm tree. Firestorm is the tree that makes survivability a lot easier, and Ignite skills like Heat Wave and Phaser Beam become even stronger. We're mostly using Thermal Bomb because it's a really short cooldown, and you can get some really strong damage for bosses and crowd control when you kill the enemy that you hit with thermal bomb. For the skill tree, I'm going to keep that on screen right now, but I'm going to walk through it. There's also a link below to the full tree as well. The magma golem nodes are for more survivability, and with all of them, that's an extra 50% health. The large nodes warm up in wildfire to reduce skill cooldowns for ability spam. More ability spam means more anomaly power being used, and more anomaly power means that you're getting more healing. All of the increased anomaly power nodes are sort our skill spam does more damage, enemies and bosses die faster, and we heal more from skill leech. The burn nodes are so the damage over time ticks from heat wave and phaser beam do more damage, as well as keep burn going for longer. The more uptime with the burn, the more damage we do across the board with the 15% damage increase from trial by fire. Basically everything in this build skill tree is revolving around spamming fire and using all that fire for heals, damage, as well as survivability, and everything just synergizes really well, especially when we add in armor next. Armor is the most important part of this build and really any build in Outriders. If you're still playing the campaign, the armor you get doesn't matter too much since you can always lower the world tier and progress forward that way. If you're doing expeditions, your armor means absolutely everything. You need to get armor pieces with three of the stats that you need and at least one armor mod for this build. There's four stats that are good to have on your armor, anomaly power, cooldown reduction, status power, and skill leech. Anomaly power and skill leech are probably the most important for this build because they most directly improve your expedition success. Skill leech heals you for a percentage of your skills damage, and your anomaly power increases the amount of damage your skills do. The higher your skill leech, the more healing that you get. The higher your anomaly power, the more for your skill leech to heal you, and the quicker you kill what's damaging you. Cooldown reduction obviously makes your skills be available more often, but status power affects two things on Pyromancer. It increases the damage each burn tick does when you hit an enemy with a skill that inflicts burn. It also increases the time an enemy is immobilized by the ash effect. For this build though, status power is mostly just to help with crowd control. As long as you get any three of these on an armor piece, it's not something that you should immediately trash. Then your armor piece only needs one of the following mods to roll on it since you can change the other slot to another mod from this list. Get what you need in mod slot 1, change mod slot 2 to another mod that you need, and vice versa. So in total you have 10 armor mod slots, 5 armor pieces with 2 slots each. The first 3 mods are for survivability. Blazing Aegis increases your armor by a pretty large amount for each enemy you kill that's affected by burn. It stacks up to 3 times and lasts for 8 seconds. And this is one of the most important mods for this build if you're struggling with staying alive. Rejuvenation is similar to Blazing Aegis but increases your firepower anomaly power, and armor bonus whenever your health is replenished. Basically all of the healing being done with this build will keep this almost 100% active. It lasts for 8 seconds but has a 10 second cooldown, so there's going to be 2 seconds without it. A radiation wave is another mod for staying alive. It inflicts weakness on all enemies hit by heat wave, and weakness lowers the amount of damage enemies deal by a flat 30%. With these 3 mods, you'll have so much extra armor, and take so much less damage by just casting skills all the time. Time. The rest of the mods you'll need are about making your skills stronger. Tidal Wave lets you cast Heat Wave one more time before triggering its cooldown. Burnout makes enemies hit by Heat Wave take an extra 25% damage for 8 seconds.
tokens, which stacks with the 15% from Trial by Fire in the skill tree. And then the mod Bullet Kindling also adds another 20% more damage against enemies afflicted by burn. So once all of this is stacked up, an enemy hit by Heat Wave will take an additional 55% more damage from any damage source. And then we have Twice as Hot, which inflicts a large amount of extra damage to enemies under burn every time you cast a skill, which you're going to be doing a lot with this build since this mod has no cooldown. It's just a free instant damage on top of everything else. And then there's Heat Leech, which gives your skill leech an extra 10% for 10 seconds whenever you cast Heat Wave. Basically, this is a permanent 10% more healing since Heat Wave's cooldown is lower than the time it takes for this buff to run out. Inferno Wave is an easy mod to use, it just increases your Heat Wave's base damage. And then Frequent Phaser reduces Phaser Beam's cooldown by 30%. So that's 10 mods right there, but if you're comfortable losing some of your survivability, you can replace Blazing Aegis, Rejuvenation, or Irradiation Wave with either Pure Power, Size Matters, Ride the Wave, or Fire Tsunami. Pure Power increases Phaser Phaser Beam's raw damage, Size Matters increases Phaser Beam's radius by 100%, Ride the Wave lets Heat Wave be cast one more time before triggering the cooldown, so then you'll have three Heat Waves for every cooldown. And then the one mod you should definitely upgrade to if you're able to is Fire Tsunami. It increases the width of the firewall from Heat Wave so you hit more enemies at a time. You'll get this tier 3 mod by buying the Helmet of the Ikari Legendary Helmet from Tiago. Once you dismantle it, you can use the mod on any epic armor piece or just use the helmet of the Ikari itself. This helmet might not always be available to buy from Tiago since the developer said that Tiago's inventory will probably change at some point. We just don't know when that'll happen or how often his inventory will change. So basically use every heat wave mod, but the only one you don't want to use is Hellfire because it only increases the damage that heat wave does after you hit 3 enemies. So if you cast heat wave at a group of 5 enemies, the first 3 will take normal heat wave damage, but then the last 2 will take increased damage. There's just better mods for that slot. With all of these mods, this build revolves around nearly constant ability uptime and just stacking as many benefits for having so much skill spam. You have more skills more often that do more damage and heal you more. Once you're ready to start getting legendary gear, you're going to want to get three pieces of the Ikari legendary armor set for the anomaly power buff when you hit enemies with heat wave. The last thing you'll need in this build is just a weapon that you can use in between skill cooldowns. You won't have a lot of time without any abilities, but for those moments that you do, a weapon with some large and instant damage will keep up your damage output. A personal favorite is the legendary assault rifle Air to the Desert because it has a tier 3 mod that it rolls with called Sandstorm. It a lot of damage over a five second period. Then you can also add the Shadow Comet mod. Shadow Comet does a huge amount of damage in a small 3.5 meter AoE. For those moments in between ability cooldowns, this combo will drop a ton of damage in a small AoE that hits multiple enemies. I try to target the enemy I hit with Thermal Bomb so that they die and cause Thermal Bomb's larger explosion to go off. Everything about this build, from the skills to the skill tree, the armor and the armor mods, are about weaving as many skills as possible for more ability damage, more health regen, and just stacking all of it to make whatever expedition, boss, or campaign mission that was holding you back easy. If you prefer having an extremely concise version of every upcoming build, or maybe you just want to support the content that I create here, I have all of that on my Patreon with ad-free viewing too. Thanks for watching. Be a paradise